All right, so for part C, the region R is our base. And the cross sections are perpendicular to the y axis, and they're going to be squares. So we want to find the volume of that solid. So I'm going to sketch a graph down here, kind of at an angle to give us that look of three dimensions. We've got our square root of x, and we've got our line. And we still have that same region in here. But now, instead of taking that region and rotating it around an axis, that's just the base of our solid. And we're going to have a bunch of squares, basically square prisms, sitting on top of this that make a three-dimensional shape. And it tells us that it is these squares are perpendicular to the y-axis. So we're going to have a square kind of coming up like this with a tiny little thickness to it. And that thickness is going to be dy. So, like, this thickness of this square is going to be our dy. And <clears throat> for these cross-section problems, we're just taking the definite integral from a to b of the area. So, in this case, it's the area in terms of y times the thickness dy. And we're just adding up the area of all of those square prisms. Um, so... For this, then, we're going to go ahead and figure out the area of this formula. Well, we know area of a square is just the side squared. But we have to put this in terms of y. So this side, we want to write s in terms of y. Well, we're going to have to kind of change the way we've been thinking. This equation is y equals x over 3. We need to solve that for x. So x equals 3y. So this is the equation we're going to use now that we're using a dy cut. And this is y equals square root of x, but we need to think of it as x equals y squared since it's a dy cut. So we're looking for this s. We're going to take the right function minus the left function. So we're taking the line, 3y, minus the square root function, y squared. So that's our s. So the area in terms of y, if we take this and put it in for s, we get 3y minus y squared squared. So we've got what we need inside the integral here. We need a and b. These are not going to be the same as the first two because we're doing this in terms of y. Well, the smallest y value is still 0. What was this intersection point here again? 9, 3, right? So the biggest y value would be 3. So if we evaluate this, we should get 